Did you know that there are a cast of characters at Christmas? Angels, shepherds, wise men. Last week, we looked at Mary. Well, this week, we'll look at our leading man, Joseph. Well, my name is Ellen Cusack. I'm the pastor of Alloway United Methodist Church and Canton United Methodist Church. And I'm glad that you've taken the time today to join us. The churches are meeting in person on Sunday. Canton meets at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning, and Alloway meets at 11 o'clock. And uh, we have plans to meet in person on Christmas Eve. The Sunday after Christmas, we will have a special guest join us, Artaban, the fourth wise man and you're invited to join us. Today, as we look at the experience of Joseph, we're reminded that God still speaks to us and he loves to hear from us. So today, before we read our uh, passage of scripture, we're going to spend a few minutes in prayer. I would encourage you to take a moment and pray with us. If you have a concern, or even a praise that you would like us to pray about, message us or email us, and we would be happy to pray for you and add it to our prayer chain. So let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this day. And Lord, we're thankful that although we might be in many different places, Lord, that we are all still a part of your body, a part of your church. God, be with us during this time. Lord, uh, we're thankful for technology. And Lord, uh, make this a time where we worship you, praise you. Lord, a time when we just adore you. Lord, uh, we pray for those uh, during this season who are grieving, uh, who have lost uh, friends or family members. We pray for those who are caregivers during the season. And Father, we pray for those in need. We know that probably not too far from us, there are children with hungry bellies or um, who don't have the appropriate clothing. God, we ask that you would open up our not eyes to those needs, Lord, so that in serving them, we might serve you. Uh, Father, we pray for our country. We ask that your will would be done, that you would talk to those who are in positions of leadership. Lord, we ask that they would seek your face. They would focus on you, Lord, and their hearts would belong to you. And Father, I ask that during this time you would hear the prayers of your people. Father, we pray for those uh, in hospitals, in assisted living facilities, uh, Lord, in many different types of uh, facilities. God, we ask for your hand upon them, Lord, that you would bring hope to them, that you would bring joy to them during this season. And Father, uh, we thank you and we praise you and we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, our scripture reading today will be from the book of Matthew. Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. And our reading will be from chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. And I'll be reading from the NIV, the New International Version. 
This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in his mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Last week, uh, we began to look at the Christmas cast of characters by fo focusing on Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus. You know, God had a plan for Mary's life. And in spite of the difficulties or hardships that that plan would bring her away, Mary submitted to the plan of God. When we surrender to God and his plan for our lives, you know, Jesus shows up when we need him. And then he walks the journey with us. You know, this week we'll focus on Joseph as our next member of the cast of Christmas. Normally, I assume that when someone is cast in a performance, they're given a script. Um, I know the one thing that I would want to do is I would want to look and see what my lines would be. You know, Mary's lines in God's script uh, reflected her conversation with the angel Gabriel after he told her that she would give birth to a son. A son. Remember, she said, how will this be since I'm a virgin? The script of the angel who told the shepherds not to be afraid would also include the host of angels praising God, the sky alight with their presence. The shepherd script would include them telling the story of all they had seen after they visited the baby. So what about Joseph's script? If we look to the Bible for Joseph's lines, we realize that we need to figure it out for ourselves. In the script for Christmas, no specific lines are given to Joseph. We're told what he thought, but we aren't given any specifics. He's the silent member of the cast. No beautiful songs like Mary's or those of the angels and no preaching like the shepherds. As we look at Joseph's part of the story of Christmas, we realize once more that Joseph really had quite a dilemma. We read today, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Well, Mary was betrothed to Joseph, and to better understand Joseph's predicament, it's helpful to understand what it really means to be betrothed. Um, the process involved both families. The families would agree, probably the fathers, that their children, the young man and the one young woman, would be betrothed. And this was a legal agreement, and only a letter of di divorce would break it. Um, the bridegroom would give the prospective bride um, a gift of value, perhaps a gold ring, and the bride price was negotiated, and the groom's father would pay that to the bride's father. The traditional period of time of the betrothal was a year, and during this time, the groom would prepare a home for his bride, 
probably, you know, uh, added on to his father's home. And the bride would prepare to leave her father's home. And while they were considered legally married, they didn't live together and the marriage was not consummated. So it was during this time of betrothal that Mary became pregnant with Jesus. When he found out, it seems as if he started to review his options because we read, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Well, you know, we have a tendency to always see these things in the Hollywood version, you know, this touching Christmas love story. But we don't really know if that was the case. Joseph was legally bound to Mary. We don't know how well they knew each other, but we know that J Joseph knew the law and he took his responsibility seriously. He had a responsibility to Mary and to the families because they had come to a legally binding agreement. To dissolve this agreement would be no easy matter. So Joseph decided that he would handle it quietly so the whole village wouldn't be talking about them, knowing that if the word got out that Mary was pregnant and Joseph knew the baby wasn't his as he had been obedient, um, that would make Mary an adulterer in the eyes of the law and she could be punished by stoning. Joseph probably wrestled with this and then decided he didn't want to do that to Mary. He wanted to follow the law, but had compassion towards Mary and decided to handle it quietly. However, you know, small town, so I can only imagine what that would have been like. But he must have felt as if Mary betrayed him. How could this have happened? Have you ever been in that position? You know, you've done everything right, you've trusted, you've believed the best, and in spite of that, you've been made the fool. So what do you do? You know, we make decisions every day of our life, you know, cash or credit, overtime, family time, me, at Wawa, regular holiday blend, but some decisions that we make affect the entire course of our lives. And Joseph had decided to handle this matter quietly until the dream. You know, I wonder if before Joseph went to sleep that night, he, he just poured out his heart to God. You know, God, what will happen next? What will become of Mary? What will become of me? What about our future? Joseph needed to hear from God. And then as Joseph slept, an angel came to him in a dream and the angel told him not to be afraid to marry Mary and bring her home as his wife because the child that she was carrying was of the Holy Spirit. And again, there are no lines in Joseph's script, no conversation with the angel, no buts or if. The next thing we read is that Joseph woke up and he took Mary home to be his wife. Whether Joseph did ask God to go forward, we don't know. But we do know that God spoke to him and Joseph listened. You know, and isn't that really the hard part, the, the listening to God? You know, our lives are hectic and sometimes we just get through one crisis or one issue and another follows on its heels. And how can we listen to God? And does he really speak? Well, God speaks to us in many ways. You know, sometimes God speaks to us in, in messages or in sermons that just happen to meet our immediate needs. Other time, he speaks to us through uh, the godly counsel of others. Um, there are times that he even uses disappointments to direct us. And sometimes it's that quiet 
whisper that we hear in our spirit. I'm convinced that if we truly want to hear from God, that we need to be listening. And if we're listening, will we have the courage to obey? You know, when God spoke to Joseph, Joseph listened and obeyed. The scripture says, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. You know, we, not, we might not hear God's whisper. But we can read his word, the Bible, and follow when it says, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others what you would have them do to you. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ has forgiven you. You know, these are familiar words to many of us. And if we obey them, they are life changing. These words strike at the heart of who we are and, and what we've experienced. You know, is it loss, betrayal, heartbreak? These things cause us to rely fully on God to obey them. And we all know that there's a difference between a hearer of God's word and an actual doer of God's word. You know, I'm sure you've heard people say that sitting in a church doesn't make you a Christian any more than standing in a garage makes you a car. Well, if we obey Christ's teaching and try to live his way through his strength, God makes his home in our heart. You know, in the nativity story, jo Joseph might not have had a speaking part, but his actions speak louder than words. You know, the message of Joseph's story is this. People will let us down. We will be hurt, disappointed, sad, even angry. But God longs to speak to us. He will speak to us in a way that we can understand if we listen. And then it's up to us to obey. As we continue to prepare for Christmas, as we read that we need to order now in order to receive our uh, package by Christmas, as we get caught up in those last minute preparations, let's keep an ear open for God's voice. Let's make time and, and, and space in our lives to listen to what he says through his word and the world around us. If we listen and obey, God will use us in his cast. Let's pray. Father, we can't begin to understand what it was like to be Joseph. How he could trust you the way he did. But God, we ask you to help us order our days in such a way that we take time to listen to your voice. And when we hear your voice, give us the courage to obey. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.